I know you guys have heard it a few times, but congratulations on a distinguished district. It is a true honor, you know, to see the growth and the continued improvement in the district. And, uh, you know, as we've kind of at Scott growed additionally, you know, right along beside the district, it makes us even more proud, you know, because we feel feel like we're a strong part of it. And uh, especially with uh, so many schools going up and performing together, we're really excited about that. So as I get started, our uh, first point of pride is, uh, in reference to that, our first point of pride is that our overall status for the second consecutive year is proficient. We are overjoyed about that. Uh, that's a uh, score from 62.7 uh, three years ago, then a 71.4, and now a 75.1, which is uh, over a 60 percentile jump in three years. Yeah, we were very excited. It's, uh, uh, we missed uh, Distinguished by .4 which is fine. Uh, with that much growth, um, I, I have a lot of faculty who really are pumped up after that point four. So, so that's great. We're very excited about that, and we do expect to make that. We are not done growing. Uh, if you ask my teachers and my kids, they'll confirm that for you. Um, one of the things we've done is hooked to our second point of pride is we have really, in the last three years, spent a lot of time getting uh, everyone in our community, including our students, to buy into becoming college and career ready. Uh, that's been one of our main focuses and one of our drives for the school. And uh, you'll notice that uh, it has uh, increased our uh, college and career ready score. Additionally, uh, one of the big points of pride for us is we had the uh, 11th highest growth indicator in the state of Kentucky. And let me explain that to you a little bit because it is very important to us. Growth indicator is from the plan to the ACT. So from the beginning of the sophomore year to the end of the junior year. And the other thing about growth that's special for us is uh, growth, they actually compare you against students performing at the same level. It's a data equalizing deal that really does control uh, for if you have poor students, they're compared against poor students. If you have high performing students, it's compared against high performing students. So for us to score you know, 11th in the state, uh, 95th percentile on growth, that means that we're moving kids. We're not just having a high performance group come through. We're not just, you know, doing well with a few kids. It means we're moving kids, which is a uh, really exciting for us. Um, our CCR, as I mentioned, has grown, has went up considerably, and you'll hear me talk a little bit that, about that later, but that's kind of what we've, we've really honed in on is uh, getting our kids to buy in on wanting to be college ready and career ready. Um, in 2014-15, uh, things that we implemented that really pushed us forward. I know uh, I watched uh, my two board reports from the last couple of years to see what I had said last time. And some of it's repetitive, which is that's okay because uh, I do think we've chose some things to, to focus on and keep going. Uh, one thing was uh, uh, my first year at Scott, the board came out, or we sent a team out to Scott, and they did a big review of us instructionally. And that drove us for every year. Um, and last year was the first year we felt like on these five specific things, which came from that review, that we had we'd accomplished them and ready to move on. And that is uh, consistent use of learning targets, consistent use of formative assessments in the classroom where you check on kids as they're learning, uh, using a lot of student-to-student -student activities within the classroom, making the use of quality text common and part of the curriculum, and then also teaching every second of the classroom. Um, we have translated those to a new set of goals for our teachers this year, but that drove us for three years from that review, and I really do think was a huge part of transforming uh, instruction in the classroom, which, which pretty much controls everything for you. Um, also, we expanded last year our RTI classes. Just to remind you, at Scott, uh, we started this uh, a couple years ago, and we've increased it every year. Now we're to the point that if students are not performing above benchmark, any freshman, sophomore, or junior that is not performing above benchmark in math and English have to take extra math and English. I should say get to take extra math and English uh, until they get there. And uh, we feel that has, uh, uh, has really increased our scores. And we do that as, as in classes, not in a separate time period, not in a uh, pullout. Uh, the kids don't really even realize at some point that they're in there because a lot of kids do that, and uh, it, it really has spent a lot of time. For example, if you're a sophomore and you're behind in reading, you're going to get an extra 60 hours, an extra 60 hours of English instruction from an English teacher in an English classroom, okay? and that, that's powerful. Um, we've also continued to, uh, to work on our seniors a lot, and uh, we've made that a very positive thing in our school. If you come to our school, you'll see uh, a lot of our CCR seniors 
our college and career-ready seniors are uh, posted around the school. They're celebrated. They have uh, celebrations different times of the year. And uh, the kids all know where they're at on CCR and uh, how much they like, like to go. Um, we actually made the same, just a little bit higher percentage this past year than we did before. But uh, for us, that was tremendous because we started the year 10% lower. Our seniors last year started 10% lower than the year before, but we were still able to reach the same um, percentage of kids to make that uh, CCR level. So we'll continue to do that. Uh, we have moved toward uh, some new um, goals for us in the classroom. Our teachers have also adopted them and decided they want to lead and take charge of those, so we're turning over a lot more responsibility there. Uh, I wanted to report a little bit to you on our school-wide PBIS. Uh, because we've worked a lot on school culture since I've been there. Uh, PBIS is a program where we're positive with kids during interactions. Even when something bad goes on, we try to remain positive with them. The other thing we do is we have what's called Eagle Cash. We uh, give tokens to kids that show they're doing something well or they step out of the box and you know do something a little mm -hmm. extra special. And uh, three or four years ago when we started that, a lot of people said, well, that's elementary, you know, and it's not really something high schoolers buy into. Uh, our school has bought into it. I mean, it is, Eagle Cash is almost better than money at my place. Uh, just for an example, the la we do an Eagle store every two weeks. Every two weeks, the kids can buy uh, uh, shirts, they can buy some candy, they can buy a uh, um, 10 points bonus for a, a test, that kind of stuff. Uh, the last time we had an Eagle store, and we have it every two, th every two weeks, we had t over 2,600 Eagle Bucks cashed. Yes, I mean, if you show up at my school at Eagle Cash, they will, uh, they'll see you. It's, uh, it's very cool. Um, so uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep doing what we're doing and getting better at it. Uh, we are not done growing. We're not done improving. Uh, as I said, my teachers are starting to step up and take those, those jobs. And uh, they've actually even said, like, you know, I want to share this with the teachers. I want to teach this. I want to learn this. Can you step out and let us start taking control of some of the leadership? It's really the first year I feel like that, if I was gone, it would actually go on without me. And uh, that's something to really, really feel excited and happy about. Uh, we're going to continue to target our at-risk kids uh, as we have. And we are getting better at that, looking at a lot of data. And again, the teachers are starting to look at that without uh, the administrators and the people you know, pushing on them. They're seeing the benefits and kind of pushing that themselves. Uh, this year, as we analyze the school report card, what we're going to do this year uh, that's new we're keeping all the stuff we're doing. But what we're doing new is we are working on the career ready part of career and college ready. Uh, we started this last year, but we've got to really ramp it up. And what we found is, is that we can, um, we can implement things at the freshman level to get kids interested and then let the academy structure take control of that. Uh, career pathways are very expensive and they're very hard to do from a high school point of view. But what we've actually done is we have – piloted uh, several programs at freshman level. Our freshmen take clean energy systems, which is feeders for the, uh, the Green Academy. Our freshmen have available to them Media Arts and Informatics, which gets them ready for the Media Arts and Informatics Academy. Uh, also, we have, uh, uh, thanks to the academy structure and, and the district, we have military prep academy classes and future educator classes for our freshmen. Additionally, we teach a pre-engineering class at Scott that gets kids ready and interested in the engineering tracks. So we've got a feeder in place for every academy there is out there, and we're trying to take advantage of that so that uh, you know we get our kids excited and into that, not having to to go from us producing our own uh, our own streamline there. We also have increased our number of uh, college students. We have over a hundred college classes being taken by Scott students. Uh, Percentage-wise, we have the largest number of kids in the area, in the entire area, taking uh, college classes. And we just started second trimester. We added about 20 today <laughs> that just decided I'm going to try college classes. And we're, we're really excited about that because that gets them into the real world and gets them into their next step of their life. Um, we're not done. We're not done growing. Uh, you've seen some great growth from Scott, but I'll guarantee you we're not done. Uh, if you ask my teachers and my kids and my community, they will tell you we're not done. Uh, we do feel that the, um, the new building had a large help in pushing us over the edge. We're getting ready to move into a new wing, hopefully this fall. 
uh, it, their own schedule, so that is the current plan, uh, which will be a new science wing, if you didn't know. It will also be a new, new lunchroom and a new library. So that will greatly increase our capacity and our ability in those areas, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, again, thank you very much. Uh, this is getting easier every year. At least we're doing better every year, so I feel better about it every year. So uh, any questions? Yes, that's very exciting. Very good. So your 88% graduation rate, so what is the state? The state is uh, 89, I believe. Is that right? Graduation rate? I think it's 89%, yeah. We've got several programs working on the uh, working on that, but, you know, there's been a lot of changes recently. It, it's, it's hard to graduate, you know. Um, at Algebra 2, I mean, it's tough. And just this year, we've increased Algebra 2 to three trimesters to give kids extra help with that. So we're hoping that's going to help some. Uh, also, we've got a school within a school program that, that works a lot with fifth-year students. Uh, the graduation rate is based on five years. We're actually graduating a lot of six-year students, so I wish there was a recognition of that somehow, but, you know, there are kids that it just takes a little longer. So this is based on a five-year basis? Yes. They report a four-year also, but the fifth year is what uh, counts for your assessments. Thank you. Yeah, we all share. Yeah, we all share. <laughs> uh, it, it has gotten a lot better. One thing, you know, if you talk about discipline, is our discipline numbers have kind of leveled out, but we're doing dis different discipline now. And I said this when I started there years ago, and I don't know if, if ever all the teachers believed this or not, but we were finally there. It is now uh, a discipline infraction to not work at Scott High School. You know, initially we were trying to get, you know, some of the, the – harder disciplines in trouble but if a kid just says I'm not working today they're actually in trouble now so uh, we've we've kind of mandated engagement which is exciting <laughs> it, it depends on a number of things usually we'll show up and have a discussion with them they decide it's okay to work uh, <laughs> yeah usually and it sometimes we'll call a parent and have them come in and work with us uh, yeah, I mean, we just we just keep escalating until they work. You know, I mean, occasionally you'll have a kid that'll push you, but more often than not, you find out there's something else going on that does need to be dealt with. Uh, but very few kids. Once we kind of show up and have a discussion with them, it's very few kids. You know, but but it's exciting because you know, if, if for a teacher, because if they ask them to work and they won't, instead of going away, it's I need some help. We're going to have some help, and the kid's going to get to work. Absolutely. Yeah, we call it asking for big help, so we call it. <laughs> Thank you.